Welcome to the past exam question from the ACCA Strategic Business Reporting or the SBR for the March and June 2023 exam question go through. Let's see the question called cut third company from the question two. Now, as always, let's break down the requirements. Now, we have got part A, B and C, if you're not exam, the best practice firstly is to copy the requirements into a word processor and break this down. Now, firstly, discuss, which means you need to put the words because in each of your point. How the advancement of the IT impacts on the ethical responsibilities of an accountant. Now, firstly, as the professional accountant, our responsibilities would be firstly to make sure that the control system of the client's company, of the companies that we are working in, would be okay, would be effective. And therefore, we can bring confidence to the shareholders or investors. Now, four marks here, there'd be no need to refer to any specific exhibit to answer part A. Right, but from my perspective, always link your answer with the case so you can see a big picture of why the examiner is setting the requirement like this. So in this exam, of course, one mark equals to one sentence and make sure that you always follow that rule. Part B is to discuss the ethical issues faced right by the accountant. Now, this means that we are always focusing on Mr. Imbrima, okay, this person, and the internal auditor. Okay, so we have got Mr. Franklin H1. Okay, so there will be two guys here, and that's why we just split our marks, six marks. I would say that, okay, equals to six sentences again, and possibly I would be allocating three marks related to Mr. Embrema and Mr. Franklin. I would like to split two marks in that. And of course, and any actions that you should take to address these issues, I'll allocate one to two marks or sentences related to the final part. So do remember that we have got two marks here. So when answering the ethical issues in the SBI exam, my top tip for this kind of requirement would be, firstly, always use the word because or as. So it will force you to think why you're going to be giving that point. The second element within each of the point in your answer is to be very specific or detailed. You can't say that simply, okay, uh, so from the scenario like that, uh, it seems that it's breaching the familiarity threats to objectivity and full stop. No, uh, possibly you will gain 0.5 marks for giving that point. But in order to get one full mark for each point that you've made, it will be very important that you need to be specific. Okay, so we've got a clue from the case that we are friends or we have been an accountant for many, many years and we uh, are not really be very careful enough to check the details and so on. So this creates familiarity, threats to objectivity, that kind of stuff. Okay, so you need to be very specific, tailored your answer to the case. The best way from my perspective to tackle the part based is always to focus on each sentence okay, in, from, from the case scenario so that you can uh, link that and to comment on that. Part C okay, is the traditional accounting achievement requirements. Explain the effect of the IAS38 in tangible asset and IAS36 in payment of asset on the accounting achievement of the purchase of a company's procurement system and development costs. And, in the financial statement for the year ending 31st December X8. So this means that A marks will be allocated for and for related to intangible asset according to ICE 38 and impairment according to ICE 36. And as I said, my top tip for the SBR for the accounting treatment is to see whether or not the requirements is more than five marks or less than five marks. And here clearly it's less than five marks, of course, we will need to, yes, we need to follow three steps approach here. So firstly, is the general IFRS requirements, and then talking about the application 
and finally the conclusion. So in this case, I would rather put one mark related to the advice general stuff, okay, talking about that, and I would like to allocate two marks related to application, and for the conclusion, I will add, I'll allocate the final one mark related to it. For the conclusion, yes, I always say to my students before that you can think about the correct accounting entry, you can think about the impact of our statement, for example, the ratios, you can always bring the conceptual framework requirement in, of course, if the errors are so huge, you can talk about the relevance concept. Within there, we have got the materiality principle to be applied. Now, let's see the uh, case backgrounds. The uh, third completes a successful division within a multinational company called Herding Company. Right, so if you're reading the question like this, okay, you can always use the highlight function in the Excel. I'll show you how in a second. But more importantly, is to draw a diagram or a picture so you are not mixing these two companies. So for example, within that group, it's called Herding Company. And within there, we have got a specific division called Cathard Company. Right. We are told the year end 31st December, and we've got the following exhibit by clicking on that on the left hand side regarding the new system describing the purchase of the unauthorized procurement system. Procurement system, which means we're going to buy something, buy raw materials, and so on. And it is by the Cathert Company on 1st August, which means before the year end. So always in this exam that you may be told about some sort of information that is after the year end. So therefore, the IAS number 10, it meant after the reporting period may come in. And here, it's not related to IAS number 10 at all, but we are focusing primarily on the ethical issue that we are buying this, which is unauthorised. Okay, it's not authorised by the head office, something like that. And the implications of that decision, so this means that we're going to be seeing that whether or not the purchasing decision will result in uh, the financial performance being impaired of a company later on. Now, by clicking on the exhibit, okay, so you're going to be seeing that it's all about the new procurement system, right? So this year, the herding company which means the head office, which means the parents complete something like that, upgraded the computerized system and to centralize its procurement processes. So the reason why the head office would usually centralize the purchasing option is to, for example, we are buying in bulk to enjoy the bulk discount in, in certain circumstances. So to decrease the purchasing cost for the company as a whole. All divisions of the herding company were required to use the same procurement system and this is quite usual in practice and I can certainly understand that. However, on 1st August, the divisional head of the Cathet company, okay, now, the head is called Mr. Bookman, purchased a procurement system without authority. Now, you need to think about why this would be a case. So, we can certainly use the system provided by the head office or uh, to be required by the head office and to centralise our purchasing decision and to make sure that we are using the approved supplier in all circumstances to decrease our costs and something like that. But why does the divisional head use an alternative system? You may be thinking about, well, there might be reasons that using alternative system it would be more cost effective, it may be more convenient, it may be, yes, working with a particular group of suppliers that may decrease our purchasing costs for a company, or the downside may be fraudulent transactions, or maybe Mr. Bookman spends the money out to buy that system and later on the supplier may reimburse part of that purchase price to Mr. Bookman's own personal bank account. So, yes, we can come up with different possibilities pop up into our mind. Now, moving on then, which is incompatible with other systems of a, of a group. Right, there might be problems coming in. Now, when I'm reading 
the case, I, I, I would not simply read the case and then, okay, I'm the student and to tackle the exam question uh, by referring to the knowledge from the textbook. I would not certainly do that. But it's very important that you think about a lot of reasons and possibilities popping up into your mind. So when you are reading the subsequent cases, you will find it much easier. Now, the um, new system is specific to the division and cannot be used by other divisions in, in the group. Right. Okay, now, I would say that if you're using a particular system like that, so how about if you're subsequently auditing or checking that system, that might cause a lot of problems because of the inconsistencies that you authorise the transaction and to contact with the external supplier and to making sure that price is transparent uh, and something like that. Policies are quite different from systems to systems. Okay, so you're going to be thinking about whether or not there might be additional costs that you need to think about. Okay, so always bear that in mind. Mr. Bookman stated that the third division will use this new system to make purchases in the future, right, rather than the company's centralised system. Okay, so it, it seems to me that Mr. Bookman is trying to build his own, uh, his own world within, within that company, is to be an empire within that company, we're not particularly sure. As a result of using that new system, the Cathert division developed a poor purchasing strategy. Ooh, right, that's the problem, which resulted in unfavourable pricing decisions. So this means that this increases costs to the company. And of course, investors will suffer. I would say that why we need to have responsibility from the ethical side, of course, firstly, we need to be responsible for the overall control for business because we are the, for example, the finance director, something like that, and we're the employees of the company. At the same time, whether or not it would really impact on the confidence of the investors, and well, we need to think about that. Even though the Cathert division has made purchases within the new system, it's not fully operational, right? It's yet fully operational. So this means that when it comes to the Part C later on, that we cannot amortise it, okay? We cannot amortise the capitalised development costs because, it's, yes, it's not fully operational, so this means that it's not getting economic benefit in because it is incompatible with a company's centralised systems. Right, now, um, what we are going to do is that Let's answer the part A first. Eh? So how the advancement of the IT impacts on the ethical responsibilities of an accountant? I would say that I would develop my own answer to, to, to substitute the examiner's answer because I think that students should write one mark equals to one point uh, and, and that, would be, that would be perfect to pass the SBR exam. So I develop my own answer from a student's perspective and to help you earn marks in this paper. So part A, I would like to show my answer such as this. Now firstly, Mr. Bookman by the system without permission. Yes, I quote it from the exhibit. Although, yes, uh, the, the examiner tries to help students a bit further by saying that in part A you don't really have to refer to any exhibit. So that's why I've got a quote here. And you can refer to as the in the exhibit, but you don't really have to in a part A. Now, it shows that the need that, from the accountant's point of view, will always need to challenge the unauthorised decisions related to IT because that could be damaging okay, to the business. So I would say that the first point I would like to say, yes, why it's important? Because it's our responsibility to challenge any major decision that will impact on the company's control. And subsequently, we are told in the case that the strategy is quite poor later on from a purchasing size point of view. Um, this is why we need to identify and warn any practices that might hurt the company's financial term. So this means that we need to be responsible for the internal control of a business. 
So this means that you can always think about whether or not is meeting with three E's criteria. For example, efficiency, which means uh, whether or not it's causing waste. Economy, whether or not it's sticking with budget and whether or not it's effective, whether or not shareholders would be happy about that. As you can structure this point in another way, okay, you can talk about efficiency, you can talk about economy, you can talk about effective, okay. So this means that poor purchasing strategy, so this means that it's not efficiency because you're wasting companies' money, it's not economy because you're not adhering to the budget, perhaps. It's not effective, perhaps you're buying something that's not good for the product quality later on. Okay, so from this point, you can yes, you can restructure that into many different point ideas if you want. Now, the next point I'd like to write is that the new system, yes, not working with the centralised one, and what we should do is that we need to stay unbiased. So which means we need to be quite objective indeed. Because when the new technology or new system comes into our company, we do really have to be very objective in assessing that we cannot fully rely on the pricing information given by that system or captured by that system. We need to be uh, very uh, detailed and very cautious about any changes or any sort of information that are popping up in the system. And finally, yes, what we need to do is that within that case, it's our duty to protect the confidentiality and safety of the system because as we are told that firstly we buy the system that is not authorised so why you're buying the system without letting the head office to know about this so possibly there might be reasons like potential errors potential fraud and perhaps the system is quite cheap but uh, the Mr. Bookman later on may get the reimbursement from a supplier. It may be the uh, corruption, that kind of stuff. So this is why it leads to the unauthorised change in that system. So we care about the safety issues of that. At the same time, we also care about the confidentiality. Whether or not the supplier supplying us with that system would certainly have measures in place in making sure that system is safe. If it's not safe, of course, our system information may be leaked to the third parties. So this is why we need to care about that. Of course, I've developed you with four sentences there. And of course, the examiner's answer is absolutely different from mine. And yes, you can develop your own answer based on the points that I've uh, set to you. So for example, based on the confidentiality, you say to the examiner why the uh, system purchase is unauthorised perhaps implying fraudulent transaction uh, and the supply is not inputting sufficient budget into perhaps making sure the system functions correctly leading to for example confidentiality issues and um, the system data may be leaked to a third party you can say that okay so different students would get different answer for the part A I would say that from the marker's point of view that the part A is quite straightforward and uh, when we are awarding marks to students, generous, okay, quite generous indeed. So as long as you are saying four sentences, so that will be absolutely enough there. Now, let's move on. Let's move on to the part B, talking about the ethical issues. Now, so we are told in this exhibit, we've got the accountant and the internal auditor. So we've got two types of persons that we need to be dealing with. Firstly, the accountant is called Mr. Imbrima. He's considering the impact of the poor purchasing decision and how to improve the control over the division. So it seems to me that you're only considering the impact rather than take immediate action against Mr. Bookman. And this is incorrect, okay? So it seems to me that maybe you are afraid that taking immediate action against Mr. Bookman, uh, maybe uh, you're afraid of him, something like that, we're not particularly sure. So we can comment on this, okay, you can 
copy that sentence and to comment on this. But a more viable approach, okay, uh, from the examining team is that don't really just copy the whole paragraph or whole sentence, okay, to your answer. Yes, you can certainly do that, but uh, the best practice is not to do it like that, but to summarize into your own point. Because I must say that some markers, when marking the script, they, they may not read your answer uh, very, very carefully. So if you're copying the whole paragraph into your answer, it may be seen that you're simply copying the information from the case, and it, it, it earns you no marks at all. So even though you finally make yeah, a few words as your comment, uh, maybe the marker cannot see this when he or she mark your script quite quickly, tick a tick, tick a tick, tick a tick for that, and skip your answer, and, and of course you will suffer. So um, in this case, developing my own answer, as we can see there, firstly I would say that Mr. Imbrima knows that Mr. Bookman, by passing the procurement system, a centralized system, but to purchase his own system, and faces the dynam dynamo here and breaching the ACCA code of ethics by not actively confronting the issue. Okay, so, so, so it seems that there is not taking immediate action against Mr. Bookman. Okay. Now, however, it does not wish to introduce controls which Mr. Bookman uh, feel are excessive. All right. It seems that he's afraid of Mr. Bookman. Yes, because Mr. Bookman is a dominant individual who often puts pressure on him. Right. So it seems that, yes, I can draw a conclusion that the accountant is afraid of Mr. Bookman because of the intimidation threat to objectivity. So I would say that I will bring my comments as the first sentence, okay, otherwise uh, when I'm making comments in the part B that I don't want my answer be seen that I'm copying the case information only without making my comment at all. So I would say that he experiences an intimidation threat, so being threatened by somebody else. I would say because of us, okay, because Mr. Bookman's pressure compromises the objectivity. So which means when we are making decisions, we are not objective, we are not thinking about the standards, we are thinking about the personal stuff. Challenging the ability to act impartially or objectively in line with ACCA's code of ethics. Okay. Now, this is my second point though. So I would say that yes. Uh, I would not simply stop from there, but I would give details to the examining team to explain one step further, okay, why this matters, because it's not objective. That's it. And of course, we are reluctant, or the account is reluctant to implement controls, okay, because Mr. Bookman's dominance so this means that I would say that, yes, it's not objective because you're not sticking to a rule. But I've said that in the second point. I will not duplicate my points. And therefore, in the third point, I would say that it's lack of integrity. So always think about this. I'm reluctant to do something. Yes, you may be afraid of others. You may be accepting the interest from others, which means intimidation threat or self-interest threat. Or perhaps you're not meeting with integrity principle. So these sort of things can be used interchangeably, so make sure they're ready. Now, I would explain things further. Lack of integrity, because it failed to uphold standard against managerial pressure. Right, okay, because I'm afraid of that pressure, I'm not acting with integrity, that's it. So I'm giving details about the reasons why this will be a case here. Now let's move on, is that Mr. Bookman is on the management committee of a company to whom the internal auditor, Mr. Franklin, reports 
Oh, okay. Now, uh, the internal auditor directly reports to Mr. Bookman. And I'm the accountant. I'm afraid of Mr. Bookman because he's on that management committee. I'm afraid that my job will be lost. It's simply be the ethical dilemma here. And we've got the internal auditor also reports to Mr. Bookman. Right, Mr. Imbrema has reported his concern to the internal auditor, which means the IA internal auditor reports to Mr. Bookman. And I'm the accountant. I report to internal auditor. Internal auditor reports to Mr. Bookman. Right, uh, the internal auditor is the qualified member of ACCA and known to be a personal friend of Mr. Bookman. So it seems to me, yes, I can explain the familiarity threats to objectivity. At the same time, you know that Mr. Bookman has made the wrong decision. You should challenge Mr. Bookman, but the internal auditor failed to do that. So it doesn't meet with the professional competence and due care principle. Now, I would say that now the internal auditor, yes, familiarity threats to objectivity and favours personal relationship over professional body and this is absolutely not correct though. At the same time, that undermines his competence because, yes, lead to overlooking or downplaying significant issues within the division. So this means that, okay, this decision made by Mr. Bookman may be one out of ten issues that we found out. How about the remaining nine? So uh, not really using the professional qualification, i.e. the professional competence and to uh, help with the investors, something like that. So uh, yes, that's it. However, I will also to tell the examiner about the actions. Of course, firstly, we should guard against the ethical threat. We should eliminate or reduce those threat and maintain high standard, firstly, integrity, professionalism. Or you can say about the, yes, the five principles according to the ACCA Code of Ethics. Okay, up to you then. And to solve this, yes, seek guidance from higher authority. For example, yeah, raising this issue to non-executive directors within our board. Or perhaps we should contact with ACCA and uh, and, and to see how we solve this matter. From the internal auditor's point of view, the independent review of the procurement practices will be very important, and to see whether or not you are selecting these suppliers on a fair basis. Okay, so you need to remove any particular personal biases at all. You need to remain objective in all circumstances. Now. I've written more than six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but you don't really have to do that. In the exam, there'll be no need for introduction to get these professional marks, but it's important to firstly to answer all the, requ all the requirements, and six marks, six sentences, and secondly, quoting a few keywords such as familiarity, threats, or objectivity, integrity principles, and that'll be absolutely fine and enough there. Now, the final issue related to the Part C is all about the procurement costs. And we told that herding companies' policy is to upgrade system for every four years, and the cost was five. And these, there were additional development costs incurred of $0.1 million related to the payroll. And all of these costs has been written off to the P&L this year. So this means that firstly, this is not correct there, because I would say that you can explain in the IAS number 38 for the intangible asset, firstly, that you can say, firstly, yeah, the definition of the intangible asset it's just to be the uh, asset without the physical substance. The, these are non-monetary. And to recognise as the intangible asset, it needs to be identifiable and controlled by the entity. And the cost can be reliably measured. You can say about that. And more specifically here, 
method is to upgrade the system. So this means of bringing something new, and that's related to the R&D, okay, so the research and development phase. And of course, we can always say to the examiner about the criteria that when should we capitalize that development cost as the intangible asset is where, I use my own mnemonic, is called user team. Who is the user of this computer? Team is the user of this computer. And that's it. So this means that if the yeah, system can be used or sold by the business and generating future economic benefit coming into the business, which means, yes, it's commercially viable. And if we have enough resources to complete the whole development phase in terms of human and financial resources, and it's technically feasible, so this means that we can get the scientific support, uh, report on that, and the management has the intention to complete the whole development phase, and of course, the expenses can be measured reliably, and what you need to do is to recognize as the intangible asset. And the third point, as the general IFRS, uh, IFRS quote, is that when should we amortize the intangible asset or the system? It's when we are putting it into commercial production and we start amortizing it. So this is all you need to know. And of course, for the subsequent measurement, you can always think about whether or not we should impair that system is where the useful life of a system is indefinite. Which means we're not particularly sure how many years that we should use that system. Now, um, I would say that in my answer, a creative for you is that following the three steps approach is that uh, firstly, for the general IFRS requirements, I've talked about the identifiable non-physical, okay, in terms of substance, which means we've got a piece of paper confirming that system belongs to the entity, but it's not being touched, such as the pep e property plant equipment. And applying to the case is that the $5.1 million, yes, is capitalised as the intangible asset, uh, but um, I would say that because the system cannot generate into benefit uh, to the business right now because we are subsequently told that previously that the system yeah, is yet fully operational okay, because it's not in compatible with essentialized ones. So this means that whether or not we can generate benefit of that, uh, this needs to be challenged. So I will bring this as a separate point and to see that apply to a case that the 5.1, it seems that we are not using it. So this means that it does not fulfill with the economic benefit criteria, so it would be okay to expense that. Now, I would say that if the conclusion, the correct entry, is that if it qualifies the intangible asset, yes, capitalise it, and then amortise it when we put it into commercial production or commercial use, and I would say that another point is that the impact on financial statement, you can bring it as a separate point there, is that it will certainly affect the SFP and the PNL related to the recognition of the intangible asset, putting up the value of the uh, non current asset at the same time, recognizing the amortization expenses to, to make sure the profits got down. Now, the second one. Related to the uh, ICE 36 is that they also doubt about the security of the system and potential short-term technological obsolescence. So it seems that we're not putting the system into use. So this means that whether or not the system or the intangible asset needs to be written down in value is that firstly, according to ICE number 36, you don't really have to quote the numbers, but the example directly gives you that. Now, firstly, for each entity, at each of the reporting periods end, we should assess whether or not there will be indicators indicating 
that the system would be impaired. That indicator could be from internal, or it could be from the external indicator. Internal, which means it's damaged, obsolete. External, so for example, is out of date. Okay, and the government does not allow you to use that. So you need to compare the carry value of that intangible asset with the recoverable amount. So which means from the entity's point of view, how it could recover that intangible asset costs through value in use, using it for long-term purposes, or fair value minus cost of disposal. Okay. If the value in use is 10 and fair value minus cost of disposal is 9, I would bring 10 into the recoverable amount. Okay. If the current value, let's say, is 5.1, less than recoverable amount, there will be no entries that needs to be done because it's not impaired at all. And I would say that applying to the case is that we are given the technological obsolescence and the security. So it seems that these are all perhaps the internal impairment indicators. And this is why it trigger or leads to the need for impairment tests, as I can say that. Now, what's my conclusion? I would say that based on the correct accounting entry or the impact on financial statement maybe need to be written down and expense into the PO that needs to be recognized, otherwise we we'll overstate that profit. Now, I would say that yes, from the case, I bring additional con consideration for the 0.1 million should also be capitalized if we determine that five million dollars of a system that can be used later on. And of course, if we increase the intangible asset value. At the same time, the $5.1 million that we, if we have capitalized it, but we still question about the technological obsolescence issues, that kind of stuff. Yes, we'll need to write them down, and it will significantly affecting the reporting profit, and yes, materiality principle, and this is mean, this means that we need to be very, very careful on that issue. Now finally, let's see how we bring these using the computer, okay, because you're sitting in the CBE exam nowadays. So firstly, yes, we've got a case background here. We have got the exhibit on the left-hand side. So when you are reading that exhibit, make sure you zoom in and to drag this and to make sure you can read every sentence of that. At the same time, you can copy the information by pressing Control C and Control V into your word processor like this. But more importantly, is to look at the requirement firstly and to select okay, all these issues and to put them into your word processor. And then trying to make sure that you know what the examiner wants. Part A, Part B, and Part C. But Firstly, discuss how the advancement of the IT impact on the ethical responsibilities. I would say that I don't like this word discuss, and I don't like the note of that, but you don't really have to cancel this, but saying to the examiner, okay, this is my heading, and I need to write four points to earn this four marks, so I just leave them there, it's absolutely fine there, okay. Now, part B, discuss the ethical issues faced by the accountant. Okay, now I would copy this here. And the ethical issues faced by the internal auditor. Okay, that's my second heading. And the and, yes, that's important there. Okay, we've got two and here. And this means that we need to copy the subsequent one. Any actions to take? Okay, now we're given, yes, six marks and two. So this means that I need to write, when planning my answer, six sentences in that. And applies to part C as well. Okay. Now, uh, when we are reading the case, is in, 
important that you notice that all the things that can be copied to get into your answer. Make sure that you copy into your answer and don't just simply copy the whole paragraph. So for example, uh, the accountant considering this, okay, copy this into the question B. Okay, I'd like to make this point is that the accountant considering the impact, okay, it's the accountant considering the impact, right, I would like to copy this. Uh, I would bring my point firstly that the accountant should take immediate action to protect shareholders' interests, i.e. to act with professional behavior, but the accountant, okay, change the word, but the accountant of herdings considering impact of poor purchasing decision, and this is against the principle in the ethics code. Okay, now, if you're making this point, of course, you will gain full marks for these points that you've made. Rather than just simply copy the information without any comment at all, my advice is to put your comment firstly, okay, as the first part of your point, and that will be very important there. For each point that you've made, make sure that you leave a line, okay, that's important there. And for each of the uh, headings, okay, just bold it and to underline this and change the first word, capital, um, any sort of copying information from a case, just leave them, okay? Just make sure that it looks absolutely clean to the examiner, and that's enough. Whether or not you can put the number next to that, absolutely, yes, you can do that, okay? So this is not a bullet point format, uh, because you explain them in full sentences, and this will be absolutely key for you to pass this paper. Right then, okay, I'm going to be stopping this recording now. I hope you're happy and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye. ABC, accounting for your future.